Indian is bringing two new motorcycles into existence and chances are that they are not going to have skirted fenders and air oil cooling. The company is tight-lipped about the nature of these new bikes, but some clues exist that open the door to speculation. Where is Indian going in the future and will it be a good direction? Stay tuned. Like Indian, this channel is growing, and you can help it grow further by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell. If you want to hear about the new bikes, I'll put a timestamp in the video where I begin to discuss them. But first, some context about the recent history of Indian and how it has succeeded in shaking the image of a traditional and boring brand. The original Indian motorcycle manufacturing company operated from 1901 to 1953. After 1953, the name bounced around among different owners and was stuck on all kinds of machines, from scooters to Royal Enfields disguised as Indians, to a Harley clone with an 88 cubic inch SNS engine, before an actual original motorcycle with the Power Plus 100 cubic inch motor was eventually put together by the now defunct Indian Motorcycle Company of America in 2002. That outfit folded a year later. The brand was revived as the Indian Motorcycle Company in 2006 and built very small quantities of Indian chiefs for the next five years. It made barely a ripple in the motorcycling world and would probably still be building a very small number of very expensive, very niche and very traditional bikes if it hadn't been acquired by Polaris Industries, an off-road vehicle, snowmobile and watercraft manufacturer and parent company of Victory Motorcycles. Over the next few years, Indian became the traditional brand under Polaris while Victory was seen as the more modern, high-performance option. The Indian Chief, Chieftain and Roadmaster were air and oil cooled and clearly aimed at the traditional cruiser rider. However, in 2015, Indian did something that would have been unthinkable 10 years earlier. They introduced a modern liquid-cooled engine in the Scout, an engine that put out 100 horsepower, and it didn't have cooling fins, not even fake ones. This was a test, a toe in the water to see whether the notoriously traditionalist American buyer would accept an engine with a radiator that got its power from revs rather than from a gigantic flywheel with the momentum of two black holes circling each other. And the lack of fake cooling fins was a big fat middle finger to tradition. Everyone held their breath to see whether this strange experiment would actually work. Modern technology in an American motorcycle? Sacrilege. Well, it's sold. What do you know? American buyers wanted power even if it meant having a rad on your traditional looking cruiser. The world had moved on and customers were no longer insistent on riding motorcycles with 1930s tractor engines. Whether the Scout was a death knell for Victory motorcycles was unclear. But now that Indian was building more modern bikes, Polaris decided to kill the Victory brand, an act for which many Victory owners never forgave them. That is a story for another video, but suffice it to say, the Victory brand lives on in the newer Indian models in spirit if not in name. With the success of the Scout, Indian, and by extension Polaris, had proof that Americans were willing and able to accept modern engine designs. And so they went to work without the shackles of tradition holding them back. The FTR 1200 came out in 2019 and instantly became the most powerful and well-handling American motorcycle on the market, radiator and all. I test rode it and liked it immediately, calling it the best American motorcycle. Check out that video if you want to know more. And then of course, who could forget the Challenger? A bagger with a frame mounted fairing and a liquid cooled V-twin which took aim at the Harley Road Glide and managed to deliver superior performance in almost every respect. So wonder of wonders, Indian, that most traditional manufacturer of motorcycles has four engines, and three of them are liquid cooled and relatively high performance. So what's the advantage that liquid cooling provides? It regulates the temperature of the motor better than air-cooled designs and allows engines to rev higher and produce more power. In addition, liquid-cooled engines have better fuel economy and lower emissions due to the fact that they can run leaner air-fuel mixture. In theory, they are also reputed to be more reliable, though some owners of air-cooled bikes will argue that point vehemently. The advantages of air-cooled designs? Less weight, complexity and cost, because there is no radiator and you don't have to circulate the coolant through the engine. However, with ever-increasing emission standards, the complexity and weight of exhaust systems is growing and the perks of air-cooling are disappearing. There will come a time when air-cooled engines will not be a viable option given how much it will cost to make them environmentally acceptable. What happens then? Well, Indian will have a lot of options to fall back on. So now, Adventure Rider magazine is reporting that Indian has filed a patent on two new motorcycles with the names Pursuit and Guardian. 
Indian isn't letting on what kind of bikes these will be, but what are the chances that they will have one of the air oil cooled Thunderstroke engines? Almost zero. Most of Indian's lineup is running those engines already, and they have lots of big cruisers in the lineup. Too many variations on the same theme. No need for more, I would argue. And wouldn't the Pursuit be a perfect name for a police bike? One based on the current Challenger. The police motorcycle market is lucrative, and a Challenger-based bike makes the most sense if you want to steal some of that market from Harley. Most police forces are looking for American-made baggers that have to be all-day comfortable and fast, and the Challenger meets all of those requirements. Idle speculation, but what a boon it would be for Indian to get some contracts from big city police forces. Police bikes bring in profits, but also increase the visibility of the brand, which is a further advantage of getting those contracts. Pursuit could also refer to a sporty offering, maybe a sports tour based on the FTR 1200. The FTR owners are already turning their bikes into touring rigs. Indian would do well to offer a bike with a bigger tank, bags and wind protection for the long haul. Cross the country on the interstate and tear up the back roads when you get to the other side. As for the Guardian, it's impossible to tell from the name what kind of bike it might be. It would be smart for Indian to build an adventure bike around the FTR as well. That engine has great character and plenty of power for the job. If Indian could produce a 1200cc adventure bike that tipped the scales at under 500 pounds wet, many American buyers might be tempted to opt for one over the European brands or the Harley Pan America. Especially if you styled it right. More on that later. Or maybe the Guardian is a big cruiser with the Power Stroke 108 from the Challenger. Imagine a bike that looks like the Springfield Dark Horse but with 122 horsepower and 128 foot-pounds of torque. A lot of traditional buyers might be willing to overlook a radiator in order to smoke their buddies on their next group ride. The name Guardian just sounds like it would fit on a larger bike. Now Indian just released the bored out Thunderstroke 116, a new air-cooled motor for their more up-spec cruisers. This is an indication that traditional bikes aren't going anywhere. I rode a Chieftain 111 and the Thunderstroke is a very good motor, more than capable of powering around the big cruisers. But now that the Power Plus 108 is out, how long before that engine ends up in a Chief or a Springfield? Power is addictive and cooling fins be damned. There will come a day when every new bike manufactured will be liquid cooled and an era will come to an end. Maybe that day is still many years away but I will probably still be riding motorcycles when it comes. I'm 45 by the way. In some respects it will be sad to see the old mills go. They certainly do have character. My Guzzi feels like no other motorcycle I've ridden, even when it's roasting my inner thighs on a hot day. But the manufacturers will adapt and keep producing good bikes and will keep on enjoying them. It's awesome to come across an old Corvette Stingray and admire its beauty and presence, but no one wants the new C8 Corvette to perform like a 60s Stingray. Gobs of horsepower and torque are not a bad consolation prize for losing that air-cooled look and character of the old bikes. Still, when the old motors go away, they will be missed, although there are enough air-cooled bikes out there already to stay on the road for a hundred years or more. As for Indian, they're making progress. I remember an old Indian commercial from six years back that never sat well with me. It depicted five riders on Indian motorcycles coming up to cross another road on which streamed an endless line of Harleys. At one point, one of the Harley riders stopped a procession of Harleys, checked out the Indians and nodded for them to pass. This was a tacit admission by Indian that they were a tiny company striving to earn respect in a world dominated by a huge rival. All the Indians in the commercial were basically bikes that were trying hard to play in Harley's world. It's nice to see that Indians stopped trying to play that game. They're not asking for permission anymore. They're not strictly trying to grow by stealing Harley's market share. Some of their marketing tactics can be described as overly enthusiastic. Like when they took aim at the road glide with the Challenger. But I suppose all is fair in war. They're still a small company but they are growing and ignoring them would be a big mistake for a certain established rival. So what bikes would you like to see Indian build next? Drop your ideas in the comments. Who knows, Indian Brass may be watching. Keeping your finger on the pulse of the industry is a good idea, and YouTube comments are a good way to do that. I'll start with two of my own. I'd ask for an FTR 750, something like their race bike flat tracker. Lighter and more nimble than 1200, 90 to 100 horsepower, 400 pounds, and price it around the Scout Bobber 60. That would make the brand accessible to a lot of young riders looking for a performance bike. And second, an adventure bike with an FTR engine. But style it retro, like an old military bike. 
Something that rips like the FTR but looks like a Triumph Scrambler or Royal Enfield Himalayan, with aluminum bags and a removable windshield for touring. No one has made that bike yet. Oh, and 500 pounds or less, please. Oh well, it's easy to wish, much harder to engineer and style it into reality. Whatever happens in the future, Indian is good for American motorcycling. Competition drives innovation and prevents complacency, and Indian is certainly not complacent. In these times, no one can afford to be. So let's hope for a quick economic recovery and for the success of American motorcycling in general. The more companies out there, the more choice for the consumer. And as much as I like the character of the old school motors, those new liquid cooled ones look like a lot of fun. And feel it too. So Indian, let's see them in more bikes. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.